Uh, by the way, hello, beautiful <laughs> human. I'm Zach. Uh, that is Dan. Yeah. And we are with uh, a human being who most of the world knows as the Killer Roy. Yo. Hi. What's up? Hi. <laughs> That's a very real thing, not wanting to reveal where you've gotten good things with people. Because yeah. you want to keep it private and sacred. Yeah. Oh, well, I just say it kind of as a joke. Yeah, but you also I mean, kind of mean, kinda it, a mean it a little yeah, bit, yeah. but like I don't want everyone like running around town with my damn couch, but <laughs> <laughs> I also don't care that much. But, but you do but you also do. Zach saying, I will give you my couch. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh we're not here to talk about couches. We're about we're here to talk about a, a whole lot. We're here to talk about what's what is wild to think of as a debut album because mm. y you've had a mixtape before. Yeah. When I say debut album, like, what does that even mean to you today? Um, it really doesn't. I don't know. It doesn't mean much <laughs> to me anymore. <laughs> I mean, if I'm being completely honest, it doesn't really mean a whole lot anymore. I think like it's cool. I mean, the other the 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 mixtape. Even though it, it like, I guess the only reason I don't call the mixtape an album is because I'm not fully, I don't, I'm not fully like proud of it being an album, you know, like I don't think it doesn't feel like an album to me. It feels like a mixtape and I don't know why that is. I just, maybe that's cause I'm like constantly growing and I'm changing and I'm like, you know, you kind of grow up and you gain different perspectives on life or like, I don't like how my voice sounds or like, I don't like how this is like put together this way or, or but that's not true. I mean, I, I still, I still like, you know, I think it was a well put together thing, but I just, I don't know. I just, I never thought like to claim it as like, you know, my first album and I'm still not going to do that, but it's like, it did so well <laughs> and, it, and and people kind of, <laughs> it's like one of those things where it's like, mm, I don't really like the project. But, like, it did so well, so do I claim it as an album? But I'll just be, no, that was a mixtape, and I made it when I was 16, so I was like, I don't know. But I guess, like, technically it's an album. It was an album on the, like, Billboard? Yeah. It was an album, so I don't know. And a mixtape, I mean, a mixtape really is, like, a free body of work, and you, de you think you definitely had to pay for Fuck Love, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know if it's like a, a true mixtape, but like I'm gonna call it that. So yeah. What elements, at least sonically, or maybe in the creative process, did you keep with you that you applied to the album that I listened to between yesterday and today and really, really enjoyed? I don't know. I mean, wait, you've heard the album? Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. To be honest, I mean, uh, I think it's weird. I, like when I make music, I'm not really thinking about um, keeping a certain sound or keeping a sonic. Or I just kind of like go in there. Me and my friends, we go in there and we just like talk about like things that we like. We talk about like music that we're listening to and like or like how I'm feeling that day. You know, like my my buddy Oma and and Blake, who I work with a lot, um, who did a lot of this album with me. Oma, you know, he'll always come in and he's like, all right what do you want to talk about? What do you want to say? And which is like, I don't know. It's like, it, it's a question that I never really know the answer to in the moment. You know, it's like a tough one to answer on the spot, but like it get, it always gets me thinking and gets me going. Or sometimes I'll come in with like a verse already written something I want to like implicate somewhere. You know, I think that's something I've been doing like recently is just like, I'll be in the shower and I'll think of like a line, right. That feels like something that'll start a verse or something that'll be like in the middle of a verse. And then I'll just kind of like build around that with like no music or anything, which is something that like I did when I was like 13. And then I like never did it again. Cause then I saw like, I saw juice freestyle, um, everything. And then I was doing that for a long time. And now I've kind of come back around to like, I still do that, but like, it's kind of a balance now. I'm writing stuff as well and being very collaborative and like, just kind of like, like I don't know, going with, I, I think for, for a while it was like a pride thing, right? I'm like, I, I want to freestyle everything. I want, I want to freestyle everything. I want everyone to know that I'm freestyling everything. So like, you know, it's kind of like a pride thing. And now I'm just kind of like, all right, I just want to make the music the best and like, what worked for like juice for example might not be what's best for me right like that was his process that was very specific to like i mean him and like other people as well and that that might work for other people and that it might what be you know gets him the best music but maybe that's not what 
makes my best music and I think my favorite song I've ever made, which I think is about to come out, was not made like that, you know? So I think, yeah, it's just like experimenting with the process and just figuring it out. Your process is allowed to evolve, right? Yeah, totally. And I think in doing that allows for, I don't know, something that is still you but shows growth and evolution and a change but not stagnant you know get what i'm saying and like no totally well that's the thing i think for me personally i you know there's like a lot of you know people who support me who i think i feel sometimes want me to be stuck in an era right they want me to be stuck in mm. like fuck love era forever and um th you know because i feel like it's almost like they've created you know that's like how maybe how they found out about me or, you know, they've created memories to certain pieces of music or they've like, you know, they take on like certain meanings of things and you take music into your life and it becomes kind of like, it means something different to you. And then they hear kind of like the new stuff and they're like, well, we want the old stuff. And I'm like, guys, even if I tried to go back and make this, it's not natural, right? The thing that you've, the thing that you like about the old stuff wasn't because necessarily it was a certain sound. It was because it felt like maybe like real at that time or it felt like who I was or it felt like you were like receiving a piece of me. So now I think like that's ultimately, I don't know where I'm kind of going this, with this, but you kind of know what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. And I feel like it's been, sometimes it's the, it, it's tough, right? Because I'm like, guys, I just want to keep evolving. I, I keep, I want to keep giving you where I'm at in my life. Like that's how I look at music or art or whatever is like, you got to give people like where you're at now and like where I'm at now is just not <laughs> where I was at when I was 16 and uh, my motto was like fuck love <laughs> that's not really how I feel anymore so it's like um it's it's an interesting like thing dealing with that and I, I think every artist deals with that obviously everyone's always oh, yeah. like well we want we want the old we want stuff that sounds like this it's like well, yeah, I mean, that'd be great if I could give that to you but it's just not natural for me and it's gonna come out sounding like a cheaper version of whatever the old thing was. It's going to sound like a not as good version of what the other thing was. So, sorry, I, I like to go on like tangents here. No, like, dude, this is know, right? literally <laughs> the place to do exactly <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. And, and would okay, so I want to dive into the records but on I, the album. But I, sorry, but I love them all still. Even even the people that want me to go back to do old <laughs> stuff, I love them all. I want to clarify that. I love you guys. So you mentioned like doing more crafted songs, coming up with ideas from the shower. Would you say there's more uh, of like a 14 with a dream vibe to this debut album than the mixtape <laughs> or what? No, I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> think so. This is just a, I don't know, dude. It's, it's really funny because, again, I've never really thought about it like this. The way I've always thought about music is going in. I'm like, I just want to make the best possible thing I can make. And that's how I thought about this. I mean, I've been listening. I think, I think what's changed is I've broadened my music taste in the past two mm. years, year and a half especially. Um, I was saying this on an interview the other day when somebody was asking me about, um, about like, BTS and, like, Jungkook, right? They were asking me about, like, when I became a fan. And I was like, well, it's interesting because... When I was like, I I had heard like about that like about them when I was in school, and I never really paid attention. The only thing that I would listen to when I was young was really like hip hop music, and and the only band I think that I ever liked since I was a kid was like Nirvana, you know. And anything else I didn't really like listen to. I was very like stuck in one thing. And I think over the past year and a half, I've just started listening to so I've opened my brain to so much more different music now i listen to you know random random stuff from like i mean not even random stuff just like you know things from like yeah i'll listen to elliot smith and then the next song will be i need you by bts and then the song <laughs> after that will be like future then you know like er everything's kind of becoming like a little more broader to me and i'm appreciating more and more music so i think that's maybe the only thing that's that's changed is like I'm listening to more stuff and I'm being influenced by more stuff now, right? Like, so that's maybe why well, the music's changing a little bit. I that in life, dude. Like, the, yeah. Y yeah, you cover a wide range of topics. Can we talk about Sorry? Yeah, what do you want to know? I mean, y correct me if I'm wrong, but you're talking about the, the idea and thought of fame going away. Mm-hmm. Is that a real thought that you have? Yeah. I mean, 
I get it. When I was, it's funny, when I was like, I talk about this in, in the last song on the record too, in Kids Are Growing Up. When I was younger, I used to watch a lot of, um, a lot of interviews, like favorite rappers interviews, right? And I remember like a common theme amongst stuff was like, was always like, you like fame, you know, fame is not for everyone. You don't want fame, right? Like the goal is like, you know, if like, or like, I forgot who said it. Someone was, someone said like that they just want to be rich with, 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 and, and, and not be famous. And I always used to think like, you know, as a kid, you're like, why the hell wouldn't you want to be, be a famous, like a, a famous musician and you know, like whatever. And then you kind of like get to a point and you're like, damn, like I hate, um, being overanalyzed you know i hate like I, i'm very like as you can see i'm kind of i kind of just go off the dome i just kind of like do stuff and i think like one the one thing i hate about like having attention as as blessed as i am obviously i don't want to come off like i'm like you know like ungrateful that's not what it is at all but i think like i signed up at the end of the day to do what i love and like make music i didn't sign up for like necessarily like being overanalyzed or like people's you know like opinion on me which sounds funny because you're like dude of course you sign up for that when you get into it but I was like a little kid when I started doing this stuff you know I didn't really know about that and um I think that's the one thing right I mean fame has like impacted my family life so much you know in negative ways um it's impacted like my mental health in uh. in me in negative ways i think like i think i definitely think much less of myself really yeah which is funny some people it does the opposite i think like um sorry go on no i understand why you could think much less of yourself because you start over analyzing everything you do because it's well yeah because not only are other people over analyze you're over analyzing yourself right and you're wondering if like what people are saying about you is true right i mean i've never believed anything like other than my, my mom was really cool for me growing up. Like she was very encouraging of me and, and told me basically, you know, but made me believe I could do anything I want to. Right. And then I don't know. It's something about like when you're online and you see certain things that people say and you start questioning like, damn, are these things about me true? You know, is this, is this who I am? And that's just because like somebody was telling me this, I think it was, um, my therapist I've been doing I've been doing I've been in therapy which has been helping a lot and she said something like you know as humans um I forgot the wording but it's like as humans we're we're built to take like you know like 10 people's opinions right or like the people around us we're built to take those opinions we're not built to take 10 million opinions right that's like not humanly like that's that's unnatural so like of course when you get to a certain place and you have all these other outside opinions, it's naturally just going to fuck you up because that's not what we're built for as human beings. So I think like that, that's like a part in it as well, if that makes sense. Right. Oh, a hundred percent. And and that is in some way connected to this idea that what you have can go away. And I do like, does that also fuel an interesting relationship with money? Cause you cover that in the song too. I think, People underestimate or just like overlook, you know, people who are young and, you know, they like everything that comes quick. Right. And again, like not trying to be like sound like so sorry for myself at all, because that, that's not it at all. I'm so blessed, so truly blessed. But it is like it is it is um, tough, you know, when you when you're young and you basically are thrown into an adult world where like you have to kind of hold your own a little bit. And obviously that, you know, I've have great people around me and like I have like mom who loves me very much who's like very you know protective of me but I think the thing is is uh yeah you're thrown into an adult world and now you're dealing with you know loads of money and loads of different people who are grabbing onto you or like you're dealing with just things that whatever a 16 17 18 year old shouldn't be dealing with you know or like there's all types of there's all types of stuff that goes on, you know, whether it's like yeah, like people who are around you for money or people trying to manipulate you into doing things because, you know, they know they can get something out of you or because you're young, you know, that that was another thing. It's like people sometimes tend to take advantage of like knowing that you're young and that you have a lot of stuff and they want to come around and like do, there's like a whole bunch of um different uh 
eat different things. But I mean, it's all at the end of the day, it's all like, you know, again, it's a, it's a blessing, but there are things like, I feel like people like no one tells you that before it happens, totally. you know, it just kind of happens. And then you're like, Oh yeah, I forgot. Like life, <laughs> life is still like, it doesn't all just become like, Oh, just become great. You know, there's, there's give and take with everything. Right. Um, how, by the way, the strings on that song is phenomenal. Thank you. Thanks very much. Really cool production. Thank you. How does that make its way into a song? So, uh, you're talking about right at the end, right? Yeah. So, basically, I think um, I just wanted it to go really smooth into the next song. I wanted it to just be a clean transition. So, you thought of this album like from top to bottom mm -hmm. as a whole? Mm hmm Yeah. Um, we kind of pieced it together at the end, though. Um, but we had a rough scape of like, okay, this is how we want it to to go and flow and um yeah i wanted to just make it a clean transition into the next song and everything be smooth i think it's like the little things like that for me that like make a big difference when i'm listening to somebody's record i think that's um yeah that's a big that's a big difference for me so definitely wanted to do that and we sent it um my guy oma sent it to some of his people and i, I really wish i could remember um their names, but I've I've never met them. I don't know them, but they're incredibly talented, and they put that together. And yeah, do you go into the room ready to share these stories, or is it come from conversation? Is um, it freestyle? So How did that, that song one, start? You know that song. It was interesting. So we had a rough idea of what the record was, and um, I realized, you know, <laughs> it's funny. Go on, it's this kind of goes back to your question earlier when you said like how do you go in what do you take with you into the next project from the other stuff right I think the one thing I was I was listening back to the project and I was like damn like I don't like there's not a lot whole lot of like rap stuff on here and that's such a big part of like me right it's like that's how that's like all I wanted to be when I was a kid was a rapper like still like 50% of what I listen to is hip hop and, and like, it's such a big part of me and I love, I love to rap, you know, <laughs> I love, and I was just like, damn, like this, like this project doesn't feel complete without me, like just getting some bars off. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I called my guy, uh, Tony, who I've worked with since I was like, I want to say 14, um, from Australia and um, our two other homies, FNZ, who are just fucking killing it right now, smashing it, um, doing a whole bunch of stuff. But they're from Australia as well. They're from Perth. So us four got into the studio and we kind of like set up this. We got it. We actually went to the live room and we set up the speakers in the live room and we just they were making making shit and then they would just airdrop it to Tony's thing. Tony would lay some drums or whatever on it, load it up in Pro Tools, and I'd just go and just like just punch in style, just freestyle stuff off the top. And that's how we got to Sorry. That was the first thing we did. And then I was just inst instantly like, this needs to be the intro to the album. Because Bleed was the intro to the album. And and I was just like, mm, uh, like, I don't know. I don't, uh, like, Sorry just felt like, okay, this is, this, this is, Sorry is probably one of the realest songs I've, I've written. Um, just because it's like so, I mean, wh wh when I wrote that song, I was very like, I was in a weird headspace, to be honest. You know, I've been, past a year and a half, I've honestly, honestly speaking, I've just been in a, I was in a bit of a weird headspace. Um, just because like, I don't know, I hadn't dropped music in a while. I was feeling a little like purposeless and, you know, I had, I've had so much going on in my personal life. Um that obviously doesn't need to be said, but just, you know, the, the different things that come with life. And I was just feeling very overwhelmed, right? So overwhelmed and I'm feeling like, damn, I haven't dropped stuff. I don't know what's going on. And then, you know, you go home and you have all this other stuff going on. And um, after I made Sorry, it felt like such a, like a release of, of shit, you know, it's like I got to release those thoughts and those feelings. And because it's hard for me to talk about 
that stuff, right? It's hard. It's hard for me. Like I'm, I'm a very big like anybody who knows me or like is around me. I, I love like being very unserious most of the time. You know, like that's kind of how I deal deal with like stuff. I just try to make everything funny. Like even we <laughs> we went to um like I don't know. This is like a random you know story, but we went to um we were going somewhere and uh, a festival got canceled. You know, and we were all like super pissed uh, like was this when you performed in a hotel lobby yeah yeah that's hey, sick so but this is just a funny this is just a funny story because i mean it's not really funny the whole festival got canceled but like <laughs> it's a fun it's a funny story in the sense of like this is a this is a way of me like you know this is how kind of how me and my friends are we landed in malaysia and bird my guy just looks he's sitting next to me he looks at me and he goes festival's canceled and Mind you, we had just traveled like yeah. 23 hours or something. And <laughs> and I just looked at him. I said, you're kidding me. He's like, no. So then me and my boys, Dev and Adam and TJ, we all got off the plane and we just walk in. We just look at each other and we just start laughing. We're just like, like, hell, like you know, it's like, like, like the only way to get through like tough things sometimes to me is just you just got to laugh and just like make jokes and even though you know obviously it's not a funny situation really it's not like you know like the whole festival got ca canceled people missed out and like you know we didn't get to play and you know it was a whole bunch of stuff but you like it was just find the humor to survive well it was, well it's just like fuck we may as well make the most out of this yeah. moment and just have each other and and you know and then that's what kind of sparked the whole like hotel thing was what we would just um just having drinks at the bar and I was meet like there was a lot of like fans staying in the hotel and um we were just having beers and people come up and we you know <laughs> meeting them and I noticed that there was a lot of fans in the hotel so I was just like dude we should just fucking just play a show down here and you know because it, it was it was you know the these fans are really sad you know everything everybody's really does as were we you know what I'm saying we were we were very like you know it was going to be my first time performing in, in Malaysia and I was super, super hyped and, um, you know, the fans were super upset and we were just like, you know what, um, maybe we can, you know, do a little something and just say thanks for coming. You know, cause some people were telling me they dr drove like six hours or so, someone told me like a group of friends that they flew from Tokyo to come, come and watch, which is like still crazy to me to this day that people like fly places to go and see you know shows and stuff like that's so like that's so wild to me so i was like fuck i just i felt really bad that these a lot of people came so far and didn't get to see anything so um yeah you did your thing i tried <laughs> i was really drunk <laughs> how do we get to bleed <laughs> I'm sorry I'm rambling, guys, by the way. Like, uh, you guys might have to trim the fat in here. I'm just like, I just go on tangents. I can I can talk forever. It's literally why we're here. Also, okay. your accent is really unique. It's like an it accent. Is, it's like yeah. there, but not there. We, I think we talked, we talked about, about, about this it. last time, though. No? Yeah. yeah, did we? All right, we'll move on. Uh, <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> no, it's fine. I, I really want to talk about- Are you about bullying me, Zach? No. Zach saying, are you bullying me? No, no, Don't no, bully me. No, never. Bleed. You're singing. Is it, that's a call, like a, like how can you tell which stories deserve vocals like you get on Bleed compared to just I, I don't know, as you call it spinning bars. It's just whatever like just whatever I feel like immediately from just hearing the instrumental or something right like with Bleed for example like it's also two different processes right with Bleed Blake Omer and I. We were in the studio and um Oma just started playing this riff on the guitar and the melody just popped into my brain, you know, it, it, um type deal and I got in there and I just was like, All right, we need to like I wanna like, you know, layer these vocals and make them sound this way and it just kinda like happens and we all build it from from scratch in there and we're like figuring out arrangement and stuff and Omer and Blake is so like I don't know. They're just so good at like working with artists, you know. I mean, I don't want to speak for everyone, but for me personally, it's like Omar was one of the first people I met when I came to Los Angeles. I met him um, through my homie Neek, who was my first ever Los Angeles friend, <laughs> and he was. Um, they were working together in Neek's home studio, and um, it's funny. Like over the years, me and Omar, and you know, we kind of like 
have grown together. You know, when when we both met, we both weren't anybody. And now, you know, he's like absolutely killing it. He's like got, I don't know, like a 167 number one <laughs> records or something. Crazy. Like he's going so crazy and like, you know, I'm like kind of doing my thing a little bit. <laughs> and we kind of like, I feel like in a way we built a lot, like, you know, we like, like he's made like my biggest songs with me and stuff like we're like, I don't know. We, we just, we got, we got to know each other so well over the years and each other's creative process that like when we work together, it really is like a, a, a really like collaborative, like, like we're like, I don't know. It, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like, you know, artist producer dynamic. It feels like we're, we're both making, you know, something which is like a really cool feeling is when you when you guys know each other so well that like we'll have an idea at the same time, you know, and it'll be the exact same thing. We'll be like, oh my God, yes, exactly. Or like if one of us has a note, you know, we'll be like, oh my God, yeah, exactly. That's what needs to happen there. And like a lot of times I think when I first came out here, I was just doing sessions where I'd just pull up beats and just like, yeah, like make stuff and just keep it moving, right? Like one after the other. And um, it's really cool to like, have that feeling of I don't know like someone who you can really like mesh with and yeah that's great cool. cool stuff like that vulnerability allows you to do so much hundred percent and also when you feel comfortable with talking about things totally. with people as well I mean I feel like I could tell Omar damn near anything you know or like I feel comfortable about singing about stuff right that's a real thing for me you know I can't like there's some there's a lot of people like even if it's just singing you know singing music I can't be like vulnerable with in the studio. You know, it's tough. Like, oh, at least I'll go in there and I'll sing, like, maybe how I feel. And or I'll be worried, like, damn, like, does this sound lame? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I think with Omer, it's so cool because, and like, anybody I, I walk with closely, Omer, Tony, Blake, Neek, whoever it, you know, may be, FNC, it's like, and, you know, whoever else, um, it's really cool building that comfortability where you feel vulnerable enough to go and say, and sing things even if you think it sounds lame or yeah, something. Yeah, fuck right? up. Like, that's it's just like trial and error. So it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a, a bunch of questions. You okay. mentioned the best song you've ever made. What song is that? You said it's coming um, out. Bleed. I think that's my favorite song. I think it's one of them. It's like top three favorite songs I've made. Maybe. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Why? You had that one, right? Of course. Yeah, okay, cool. Just making sure. Yeah. Okay. We just Why? talked about it. Yeah, sounds like a breakup song to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um Why is it my favorite song? I think I've been trying to make a song like Bleed for so long. Um I just love the the vocal layers on the hook. I love like the the bridge slash second verse part is like so cool i love like how it builds up and then it drops into the last hook and how the instrumental like builds up the whole way through the song and just everything about it just feels really like something i've been really trying to make for a long time and i've made a lot of songs that are trying to be bleed but they're not bleed you know i feel like i've made so many songs that i wanted to sound like that and then i finally got to a point where we were like okay this one's special this is like really cool so i think maybe that's um, I don't know. I just really love it. And I've sat with it. I've, I mean, we've made it, you know, and sat with it and still love it. I've listened to it hundreds of times. <laughs> and like, it's rare for me to like really love my songs after I've listened to them a few times. Is there another song that you felt this way about before or is this new? Um... We felt it felt like that with kids are growing up. The last song on the record. Um, I, I really love "Sorry." I think "Sorry" is really cool. Um, there's another one on this one. Um, Go where do you sleep? It's really mm -hmm. cool. Um, and uh, there's another song called "Call Me Instead." But, like, Bleed and Kids Are Growing Up are, like, the two that I'm really, like... But, like, those other ones, I've done, like, I've, you know, I'm, like, re those are the ones I'm really, really proud of. You and there's know, a lot I mean. of songs on this project. Mm -hmm. Right? Is there 18? I think there's 18, right? Yeah. And I, I did that because I've just been away for so long, and I just wanted to um, give people, 
a little bit of everything. I, I felt like, you know, my honestly, my dream is to make like a 10 to 12 song project and keep it like light, but I can't do that to the people that support me because it's been so long and I just wanted to give them a lot. And you also had that strategy where you kept songs short so people would listen to the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's... I, I love... I don't... I don't... I mean, it depends on the song, you know? I mean, I like I like songs that are a little shorter um, unless it's like, you know a build up or like different things are going on. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, like some of my favorite music over the past year has been um, Elliot Smith, particularly the either or album. I mean, all of them are, are great. Like I, I love figure eight as well, but um, what I really like about a lot of those songs on that record is like, there's a lot of like short songs, you know, like songs are like two minutes and 30 seconds and all I want to do is keep going back and listening to them again and I never get sick of them. Can we talk about the kids are growing up? Please. Who are you talking to? So the first verse, um, the first verse is just more like thoughts, you know, um, just kind of like, just like thoughts, me thinking, you know, I was in, um, I was in, there's a, there's, a, there's a line that says, like, I'm writing this from a place that you ain't heard about and you can only come in through the water mouth. Um, I was in a small town in, I mean, a town, I guess, like a community, small town in Mexico that, like, um, it's a very, like, private thing and it's, like, it's so beautiful. It's, like, my favorite place in the world and I'm not going to say the name because... Um, you don't people, want people to steal it no, too? it's not me. It's like, it's like people. No, people. People <laughs> wouldn't. Pe people would be mad if I said the name. You know, it's like a thing everyone wants to keep secret. Yeah, I d I, that's okay. not my rules. I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> piss anybody off. Yeah, I really like that place. But but you can. But you can't. You can't. Like, there's no like hotel really there. Like, you can't like just really rent a house that you have to go there through like if you know somebody type deal. You have to like. So that was um. That was what I was talking about there, because I, cause I was I was out there and I was just thinking about, I don't know, just having a having to think about life or something. And then the second verse, I'm um, talking to my mom. Talking about um, a lot, like, a lot of yeah, things, just yeah. kind of reminiscing or saying, you know, like just my appreciation from for my mother. I think that's like that's what it is. I think you know, in the verse, I talk about like. I love you even though sometimes I forget to text. I love that line because it's really real. And, um, you know, sometimes, you know, your mom or something will text you or call you and you're like, all right, I'll get to this later. And then you forget about it. And then you feel like a piece of shit, right? you like, but like you still like, it has nothing to do with your love, right? But like one thing I've, I've been learning recently is like, I, um, I've, over the like over the years coming in uh, when I say again like fame has impacted things like family life obviously it takes a whole lot of things but like I'm 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 very like I want to please everybody right so like if if I'm like okay I gotta go do this 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 okay I can't cancel on this person because they don't know me like that so I don't want them to get offended and think I'm being rude or something right um, so then, you know, you'll push something back like family time, right? Because you're like, oh, they're my family. They, they, they know I love them. Like they'll, they'll understand, right? Like the Thai thought for a long time was like, oh, they'll understand they're my family. They love me, you know, but you realize like that doesn't really mean anything. They still want to feel loved and they still want to be appreciated. They still want you to go spend time with them and stuff. And that's what I've been trying to do recently is be more, you know, like be more involved and, you know, like you know, just the small things like picking up whenever my mom calls or, you know, texting her back all the time. Well, same with my brother, you know, try, trying to go to breakfast with my brother. I try to go to bref breakfast with my brother like every morning or every second morning, you know, to, to go talk to him and like see how he's doing. Because like I think sometimes with family, we do just put it down to like, oh, totally. they, they, they know I love like they, they know who we are. They like. So they'll let me there. go and attend to. Yeah, they'll be they'll always be there. Right. And it's not true. Like so let me go attend to all these other random people who don't yeah. know my heart or don't know who I am and make sure that they're, they're good. And then I'll get around to that later. And that's just like, not a good way of thinking, but that's kind of how it happens. You know, when you, when you're moving so quickly and everything's moving so fast. So, um, back to that line, it's like, yeah, like I love you, even though sometimes I forget to text. It's like, 
once you know I love you so much more than anybody, but you know, it's also hard to explain to your family what you're going through, right? Because like when, when you're in such a unique situation that not a lot of people get to feel, um, it's hard to explain it because it's not, it's like, you know, it's not something to really explain. I, I bet like even you guys like feel it. Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a hard thing to explain. Or it's a hard thing to relate to people on. That's why I think like I gravitate, like I think someone like not to just randomly spiral into this, but like, yeah, someone who's like helped me a lot with that is Justin. Um, I think like, he has like gone through things on like the biggest and highest level. And I think for a long time I was feeling very alone and I was feeling a little like, I, st I, I noticed I started to get cold, you know, My, I started to get cold in terms of like, you know, you the way the, like, I don't know the way you are, like your aura, you start to get a little cold because you feel like people aren't understanding or you feel like overwhelmed or you feel certain things and like, because you don't have anybody to talk to or really relate to on certain things. And it's funny, like, it's so cool being able to just, like, chop it up with him and, like, he'll know exactly what I'm talking about and more, you know. He'll be able to offer advice. And we talked about this because, um, you know, I don't know. I uh, I think that that helps a lot and encourages, you know, more love and, like, care. It encourages me to, like, be better to, like – my little bro and stuff like that. And it encourages me to like have more patience because you know, when some, when you have someone in your life who's like giving you that, right. And, and, um, it just, yeah, it just, it's like a natural thing that inspires you to just keep like giving that to people. And like, yeah, when somebody gives it to you, you, you understand the importance of giving it to others and yeah, it's a whole thing. Yeah. A hundred percent. So that, I mean, that all spiraled from that one line, but like, yeah, that's kind of, um, I love that line. That's a good line. Just because I, I I I feel it so 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 much. <laughs> Are the first song and the the last song on this album connected? Uh, I don't want to say they're exactly connected, but there's connection for sure. Yeah, I mean, there's a. I mean, there's yeah. That one's the first one for a reason. That one's the last one for a reason. Um, and that's kind of because I mean, I I, I kind of want people to just kind of take it however they want, but like. The first song is kind of, you know, you're overwhelmed, you're under fucking stress, you want everyone to go away, you want everyone to stop calling your phone, you don't want to do interviews, fuck Zach saying, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 Not literally, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay. I don't want to do interviews, I don't want to talk to anybody, I don't want to post on my fucking TikTok, stop telling me to go promote my new song, I don't want to do any of that, I just want to like... I just want to fucking, I don't know, sit on the couch and watch TV or just like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. Everything's too overwhelming. And then the last song is just kind of realizing that like, you know, it's like kids are growing up. It's kind of like, it's kind of like the opposite to that in a sense where you're just kind of reflecting and you're like, you know what? You're kind of realizing, you know, like. I'm blessed and this is life and none of this stuff really matters as much as, you know, I think we have a tendency like because I'm young, I'm 20 years old and, and an older friend of mine, Callie, who's also been an incredible, incredible guy for me along with like people like Justin and Billy, like, um, Callie, you know, is 50 and he's, you know, been through a lot. He had a friend, um, who, uh, you know, went through a lot of things as well. And he's, he's been, he's been really cool in terms of offering me a lot of guidance and advice. And I think one of the things that always stuck out, stood out to me was like everything when you're young. And he said this, you know, from his perspective as being older now, and he's been through a whole lot himself. And he's like, yo, when you're young, everything feels like the end of the world, right? Mm -hmm. Everything is so intensified. Everything feels like, fuck, like I'm never going to make it out of this. And like, sometimes we work ourselves into these things where we make silly decisions, you know, that impact the rest of our life or impact, you know, things based off of like, you know, that feeling of being young and feeling, you know, experiencing things for the first time and like, Oh, everything's gonna, everything's, you know, over. And like, um, 
where was I going with this? And then, and then I think, yeah. So, so back, back to kids are growing up. It's that feeling of like, yeah, just like standing back from a little bit, being from on the outside and realizing, yeah, like none of the stuff that I really worry about matters as much, you know, I'm blessed and we got to just keep it moving. Mm. Like even like in the first, like growing up, I used to want to be my uncle Wayne until I saw his body laying in a grave. Growing up, I used to want a Jeep Wrangler until I got to drive a range, right? It's like realizing like when you're young, the things that you dream of and the things that you want is kind of like humbling yourself in a minute. Uh, in, in 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 a bit of a way it's like growing up I used to want a Jeep Wrangler like that was like that was one of my dream cars when I was young and now like I I like now I want it now I want a Range Rover and now it's just like looking back and being like damn like we we always want to like do better and we always want to like move fast and keep going but you gotta like take a second to be present and just be like wow like this is really cool and you know, we got to take everything one one step at a time. I guess I don't know. What is it like to mention your uncle in a in a lyric? Is that like a conscious decision? Does it just come naturally? Like w when you're freestyling, what is it? I don't know. I think like it's interesting. I mean, with that song specifically, I just I thought it was really, you know, when I was a kid, I thought when I when I was a little little kid, you know, I was like five years old. I thought six years old. I thought like. He was the coolest guy on planet Earth. And, you know, I don't want to um, get into his business or whatnot, but, like, I thought he was the coolest guy in the world, and um, I wanted to be like him so badly. You know, he was, like, he was, like, who I looked up to. And I remember when I was a little, little kid, I must have been maybe six years old, I had told him that, and he was, like, you don't want to be me, you know? And... He's like, you gotta, you gotta keep going with, and it, this sounds like a story of a movie, but like, he was like, no, you gotta keep like making music. You gotta keep, cause I remember I rapped for him. I was like six years old, probably the wackest shit of all time, you know, just like freestyle and probably wasn't even saying anything. And I remember he said, nah, like if you, you know, you gotta, you gotta stick to like the passion, you know, you gotta find something you're passionate about. If you're passionate about music, you gotta stick to it. And then when I was maybe like 11 years old, um, he was murdered and I don't know. It just puts that in. But yeah, like growing up, I used to want to be my uncle Wayne Teller's his body laying in the grave. You start to realize like, damn, you know what? That wasn't, that's not, that's not what I want to be or that's not who I want to be. And, um, not in a bad way. It's just like your perspective as a kid just changes totally. when you grow up. And that was just like one of the things, you know, it's like, damn, I didn't the like, yeah, your perspective just changes so much growing up. Yeah. But it also makes you into who you are today. Totally. Right? It does. Of course. Right, it gives us the Well, that's how you well, that's how you gain perspective, right? Just going yeah. through things, experiencing things, whatnot. Yeah. A lot of people wanted to know why uh I guess it's love didn't make it to the album. Mm hmm. Um, that was a Valentine's just, Day record. Yeah, I just, um, no r weird room for it, right? I don't know. I just didn't, didn't like that record as much as I did when I made it, to be honest. I think that's what it is. And, um, it just didn't, it just didn't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. It just didn't resonate with me anymore. And. Yeah, I guess that's really it. Yeah. Are there any other songs from this album that meant something to you while making it that today means something different? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's a song called You on the album. That's my favorite. Do you like that one? Mm -hmm. That almost didn't make the cut. Thank God it did. <laughs> um, and that, the re I mean, it took on a new. I, slotted it in in the place that I did because now you know I always like to tell a rough story with the album so now it kind of slots in and fits like a little bit with the story but I mean in real life it just you know I um it didn't I mean I'm putting this album out after I've gone through like a breakup and that song I wrote um when I was like very much in a relationship and 
I, I still love it though. I still like it. It's not, yeah. it, 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 it's, it's, it's not even really that like, I don't like the song. I do love the song. I think the song's great. And that's how I felt at the time. And that's, that's great. But it just, in terms of fitting with the rest of the album, I just couldn't, yeah, totally. I was tr struggling to find a place for it, but I like it. It's cool. It's kind of another, like one of those little things. It's like, I, I, like I used to want, you know, money and fame, but now I realize like, all I really want is, you know, to be loved or find love and not even in the sense of just a relationship, just in the sense of all things. Like, you know, I want to, you know, have love with like my family and I want to have love with my friends and a relationship. And that's what is important as cliche as that sounds, but you really do realize that after, you know, you gain things like money or success and then you're like, damn, this, damn, like this is cool and all, but it doesn't mean really anything without love in your life. Right? So true. Um, and then you can have an incredible, if you have love and that together, it's like you can have a, a beautiful life. But if you just have, you know, you just have that and no love or, you know, that around you, it's kind of, it's a bit of a dark place. Very. Why do you love the song? I just think it sounds good. There's Thanks, something about man. the production that I really like. Thanks. How many times did you think this album was done before it was actually done? So many times. <laughs> so many times I added stuff like last minute. I added stuff like two weeks ago, um, to the album. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know if it was up to me. I'd probably add more right now, but it's already done and turned in and like it comes out in like, I don't know, 10 days or something, which is fucking crazy to even say. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. A lot of your fans <laughs> thought this day would never come. I know. They still don't believe me. <laughs> I saw so many comments there like, we're not going to believe this until we're halfway through the album. <laughs> I was like, damn, I feel you. I feel it. But you know what's crazy? Everyone's like, you keep, li you keep lying to us about the album. And I was like, no. I mean, like, I didn't intentionally lie to you about the album. I was just, re I get excited. When I get information or when I like, I relay it straight to my fans, which is like something I'm working on, like not, doing and not because of any other reason other than like shit changes so much so like i'll get excited about that but like all right we're gonna release you know we have a date for this and i'll be like yo guys guess what i have new music and it's coming out in two weeks or like you know everything's done it's coming out in two weeks and the reality of it is is like yeah we might have something that's done and i've been given a date but then like something in a week happens and then that changes and then i'm like fucking pacing up and down and i'm like home but i thought we said like this was gonna come out this week well Okay, but I actually, you're right. It's probably better that we don't do this because I need, I do, I, I maybe do need, you know, I m maybe do need more time or something, but I get so excited and I just want to share everything with everybody. So I'm trying to work on like not doing that. Uh, it's all <laughs> part of the process, dude. Yeah. I mean, it is. Yeah. But yeah, I get excited. And I also like, I'm, I use like, you know, but like, I just be, I just go off the dome really like on my Instagram sometimes, you know, like, um, I'll just like post some shit and not even really think, think it all the way through. Cause I'm excited to share it with people, you know? And that's okay. Yeah, dude, it is. Thanks. I'm, I mean, but no, 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 you, but no like you. I know, but like, I shouldn't tell people that maybe music is coming out. If, well, like, yeah. You know what well, I'm saying? It's a little bit of a tease, I but again, I understand how that's frustrating. Well, I feel them. What is it like to be the face of a chicken burger? <laughs> Talking about the McCrispy, bro? You're the face of it. I guess so. <laughs> That's crazy. I didn't even know that, like, was a thing. What, being a face of a burger? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, no offense. Yeah. Like, I thought, like, a chicken burger would be bigger than one individual person, but I guess not. Mm, I don't know, dude. They just reached out to me to do it. and <laughs> Does Ronald himself call? No, I wish. That would have been, been fucking hard. I wish. I have an image of him picking up a big phone. A big, like how big? Very big, but you're you're also on your end holding a, a flip phone. Mm, flip phones are cool. Yeah. I like them. Yeah. They're all saying we have to wrap. Oh. Uh -huh. Really? Yeah, I know, right? It's a bummer. I could do this for another hour and a half. Do you have another question? Uh <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, dude, I have a ton. Hit me. Um, damn, damn, damn. Wait, what were you thinking? Well, can you explain what the mask on the album cover represents? Mm. Wow. You know what? 
I'm down to stay just a little longer if we can, just because like I w- I do think this is a. I'm just gonna like this is like something that I was like debating on whether if I wanted to like talk about it or not, but like when I and this might be such like a a small small minuscule thing that like only I see because like I like check this stuff. Obviously, the album imaging is a little creepy. Okay, I get it. I understand. But, like, (laughs) I see so many, like, things of people saying, like, this is, like, demonic imaging or this is, like, or bro sold his soul or, like, all this crazy stuff on this, on the imaging. And I don't, I don't really, I mean, I get that the imaging maybe is a little creepy. I don't really understand, (laughs) like, where these, like, things come from. But yeah, I think I do want to clear up what the fuck is going on a little, just a little bit. I'm not going to give the whole thing because like that's that's not fun, right? Like art is up for interpretation. And if you want to interpret it, whatever you want to interpret it, that's your totally a thing. But like I do want to say that um, this whole project, the first time is kind of everything we've been talking about, right? Like growing up and figuring out yourself and like you become all these different versions of yourself. And you look back on some of those versions and you hate them, right? And you're like, yuck, hate, I hate this version of myself. I'm so glad I'm here. But like, sometimes you get like, sometimes, I don't know, you get, you, you know how it is, right? You like look back and you're like, damn, I wish I did this differently. Or I wish, you know, this happened or whatever. And it's about like shedding skin and just like keep moving on. And the mask is a, is a, is a, it was a mold of my face, right? We got my face molded and this video that's coming up bleed um is the the the, you know the concept for for that is and then i'll and i'm I'm not going to go into the whole concept of the album cover i'm going to let people decide but the but just to give some hints the the concept of the music video bleed is i'm running away from all of these people right all these different people that have that are wearing my face right that are wearing like my face on them and I'm like trying to run away and basically they're all trying to they're all trying to kill me they're all like looking for me to like basically kill me that's their goal they want to to murder me and the whole thing behind that is um you know when you're like leaving versions of yourself in the past right and you're trying to be present you're trying to keep growing and like keep gaining new perspective right sometimes like you know old ways of thinking or old ways of, of being, or like they try to like, you know, drag you back down into the, into those, in, in, into that place. And like, it feels like that's just kind of how I was feeling. Like you kind of like, like these, these past versions of myself are trying to kill me. Right. They're not mm. trying to let me grow. They're trying to stump my growth, you know? And that's kind of like, that was kind of like just a little bit about the, about the, the bleed music video and a whole bunch of other stuff. But that was kind of like, kind of like the concept was like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to run away from all these other things that are trying to hold me back and, and fucking kill me. Right. You're just looking to evolve. Yeah. And all I want to do is evolve and keep growing and keep doing things for the first time. But like, who it's are like, those yeah. things? What are those factors that are just trying to kill you? Hold you back? Just like random stuff, dude. It's just like stuff growing up, you know? And it's sometimes it's like, sometimes it's the smallest thing. Sometimes it's like thing just like, I don't know. There's like a whole bunch of stuff that happens in life that like, I don't know. Or like you feel away when you're, 16 or something and then you don't feel that same way at 20 and you're like damn i can't believe i even thought about that even just Mm. traveling moving around has changed my whole perspective on a lot of things you know life and yeah exactly and like so um whether it yeah no matter what it is really it's just those those other versions that are trying to like hold you back and keep you down and and that's like and i don't know it's just like a little bit about um and like yeah you're trying to run away and like break free from that and evolve into who you are and become your new thing. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to clean that up for any, any of <laughs> my supporters who are wondering and we're talking about crazy satanic stuff. I, that's not absolutely not. So, yeah. By the way, all of the Kilori's music is waiting for you. Link in the description below. It's all on Amazon music. You can stream it all. Plus obviously the debut album is most definitely there. Well, I mean, I guess we have to talk about too much. Oh, let's talk about oh, it. And yeah, too much. Also, um, there's another one that you're really talking to somebody in, like sending a super clear message. But okay, to tell me which one? No, too much is let's. Uh, what just happened? Oh, uh, what just happened? 
Are you talking to you or are you talking to somebody else? You witnessed something? Did you witness your own actions? Um, that one, this it takes on a couple of different things. I don't. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go into that one. But that one is like. Mm, that yeah. one is um. You listen. You listen to those lyrics. That one is. It's funny. It could come off like it's about something that it's actually completely not. That's maybe all I'll say. It can come off that it's about something totally different to what it's actually about. Roger that. Yeah. Yeah. You, no, quickly though, you did mention you're going through a breakup. How many songs after that did you add to the album? Mm. A few. Yeah, I, it a sounds lot. like there's a couple yeah. breakup songs yeah. in the album. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely a few. Um, just because, again, it's just like after you know something like that happens, you just have a whole bunch of inspiration and new stuff, and um, again, it's just kind of like, yeah, I'm always trying to give people like an honest version of. Of where I'm at. How soon after all that do you go back into the studio? Do you wait a beat? All I wanted to do after my breakup was just work, to be honest. All I wanted to do was just work. Because it's like a distraction, but also not. Mm Mm-hmm. It's like, mm, I don't know. I was in the studio like like two days after my breakup, which is really like, you know, it's interesting because like, I mean, it was also like I kind of didn't have time to like be sad unfortunately i had so much like to get everything prepared and stuff so it's interesting i feel like i'm still like you know um yeah i didn't really have a lot of time to i just kind of got in there and just made new stuff and that that's always that's always been how i've like done things with anything that's like a lot to deal with in my life i always like tend to find distractions sometimes it's not a, a great thing i always tend to like go to the studio and try and make songs about it or something. So that's healthy. Yeah. I hope. Hope so. Too much by the way is great. Thank you. Do you get that sent that record in what stage? Um sorry, say it again. Did I get sent the record? Wait, too much is with John Cook, right? Yeah, yeah Central John Cook, yeah. yeah. Do you make that in the studio with them? Do you get sent no, so to you? me and me and Justin made that song together originally. Giddy up, so uh, you sent it out to them. Yeah, so basically what happens is um, I was in the studio. Um, the stu- there's this, this studio space and there's like three rooms. I had a room and Justin, like coincidentally, randomly <laughs> was in another room. Like we didn't plan it. It was just like he was there. And um, I was in the studio with Oma, Blake, Emil, and oh boy, Jasper, who all, who all produce music. And Emil had pulled up like the rough beat for too much. And um, I laid down like a whole bunch of melodies, like 10 minutes worth of melodies. And then I like recorded like my verse. Um, But we couldn't find a hook, which was like, but the beat was just so good. We were like, oh, we don't really have anything like this. It feels fun. It feels like, and we, but, and we had my verses, like I had written the verses and stuff um, for the most part. And we were like, damn. Like, we haven't found a hook yet, and I was about to go and, like, try and keep going to try and find a hook, keep doing melodies, and Justin just walks in the room, and he's like, what are you guys working on? And we're like, we, like, played him a little bit of it, and he's like, he just goes over to the mic, and he's just, like, punched me in. <laughs> and we're like, all right, cool. Um, Blake's recording him, and the first thing he, he does is, would you do it again, would you do it again, would you do it again, was it too much? That was the first thing he said he did when he, when he got on the mic, and we just, like, Oh yeah, there it is. That's a hook. <laughs> so, um, damn. But then, but it, there was no like words or anything written. It was just that. So it was just a demo with that and like my verses that were like half done for a while. And then he had like a little bridge part. And it, yeah, it was originally just me and me and um, me and Justin idea that we had made. And then um, this was like right towards the end of the album process of like finishing everything up. It's kind of like a you know like a last minute like thing that happened and um we just couldn't figure out what the words were for the hook we couldn't figure out like what was going on there we just knew it was kind of a thing and justin's been working a lot i don't want to obviously spoil like i'm not going to talk for him but he's been working a lot um doing a lot of cool stuff and i just remember he was like i can't i don't i don't i don't really know where to go on this and 
he was in the middle of work on stuff and we had to finish everything really quickly. So we were all sitting in the studio and, and I had sent the record to Central because I was like, um, I always wanted to do something with him ever since I found out about him. Like, I think 2020, whenever Loading came out. His I tone to and something. flow is so unique. Yeah. And also Justin Bieber's a genius. Like very I mean, effortlessly duh. a genius. It's duh. crazy. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, he's the he's the greatest. He's uh yeah, that's definitely not a secret. Um but uh so I already sent it to, to Senshi, sent it sent it back and we were just sitting in the studio and the thing the re, the the reason how JK came about was we with it there's another record that we were thinking about, like we were like should we get, should we like ask him if he wants to get on this? And I was unsure about it. I was like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if this is the one for us to do together. Right. I'm thinking about it. Like, damn, I'm like going back and forth. My mind could be cool, but I don't know if it's the right one. And then my boy Omar was like, why don't we just get him on, on too much? Why don't we see if he wants to do too much? It's just like, you know, everything clicks. You're just like, oh my God, yes, he would sound perfect on this. Like his voice would just sound so money singing that hook. And um, we reached out and like JK and I, it's funny, we'd never actually like met before, but like over the past like year and a half, maybe two years, like we had both like fucked with each other's stuff kind of like from a distance. Like he had come to my Coachella he watched my Coachella set, which was really cool. Like, you know, I like just like stuff like that, you know, we kind of like fucked with each other from a distance and like, and not from a distance on purpose, just like we never really like yeah, actually crossed, crossed like, over, right? Totally. Crossed each other's parts. And, and, um, I like, you know, recently just started getting into, into BTS, like in the past like year and a half, maybe two years. Um, and, so we'd never really met, but we had um, a mutual person and um, I sent to them, I was like, hey, do you think JK would do this? And they said, well, let me see. And then he said yes and sent it back. And now you got it. And then we met at the video shoot and it was really cool because I was, you know, you don't know what to expect when you meet people for the first time. I already met Sench a couple of times before and I just remember being like, like he, he pulled up and he was just such a little sweetie. <laughs> he was so sweet. I don't know if you've had the chance to talk to him no, yet, but no. like, and it was cool. Like, like, um, we had like a translator there, right? Um, because he doesn't really speak a whole lot of English. JK, we know. Yeah. John, was John there? John? Oh, he's a translator. He's a good guy. No. Um, I'm a big John it was fan. a, it was a lady. Um, I'm blanking. It's okay. Totally blanking on her name. But, um, but it was cool because he like I don't know it was, it, was, it like we I, we would like um if we couldn't understand each other we would talk like via the the translator it was just like really like it was really wholesome it was really sweet and like he I just remember him saying like, I'm like yo how are you feeling and he's just like he's like oh I'm a little nervous <laughs> and I just like the way he said it was so it was so like was so like. I don't know. It was so wholesome, and he oh. he like had this whole he like choreographed this whole like dance routine to the song, and um, then we had like did did it a little bit like on the TikTok. He was like trying to teach me it, and I'm so bad at dancing, but like he was really <laughs> cool. I was like, he's like, no, you're good. Like you have it, you have it, and it, it, he was making me feel r really good about it. But but I was I sucked, <laughs> and um, yeah, just seeing the like. Yeah, the way he like he was still coming up with like the dance moves like on in the like at at, at the video shoot. He's in his room when I first walked in to, to meet him. He was like coming up with the car the choreo for it. So it was like Yeah, I don't know where I'm going Dude. with that. I'm just like trying to remember. Seven incredibly <laughs> talented, kind people who are also real artists. Like all of them. Yeah. They're yeah. It's really like gifted. It's really like again, it's really interesting because I kinda like I feel almost like, damn, I wish I had like, I wish I had got, got in, got into them a little, a little sooner. You know, I wish I had like paid attention more. I mean, there's a lot of music I feel that way about. I'm like, damn, if only like I paid attention to this a little more really when I was younger. It's never too late though to consume art. It's not. And that's the thing. It's never, it's never too late to like, to, 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 to do that. But, um, I feel like there's so much music that when I was a kid, my brain was just so closed off to that, like, 
that I now I'm getting older and I'm really like enjoying it and I'm really like damn like I wish I like I wish I had like paid attention to this sooner I, I wish I had like enjoyed this sooner well we are asking you to pay attention to the first time it's waiting for you link in the Please. description below that's but, but if you find album. but but if you but if you like it in three years that's okay too yeah. you don't have to like it right now you don't have to pay attention or like it right now if you like it in three years that's also okay because I understand you and I feel you. you you'll find art when art is ready to find you right Facts, yeah yeah <laughs> Dude, I really appreciate you. Yeah, dude. So likewise, thanks. Yeah. This has been really fun. I usually, I usually want to run away from interviews, and um, I, I like this one. <laughs> you. you guys let me ramble. Thank you. Well, I, literally any time. You know, we're for better here. or for worse, but no, this is no, a really, uh, really special conversation. So I appreciate your honesty and your time, man. Yeah, dude. Of course. Thanks for having me. <laughs> the Kit Leroy, everybody. <laughs>